Right, 3 April 2024, and today I'm excited to be presenting to you yet another update on the news that is happening around Zimbabwe. So I try to bring you about 20 stories every single day. And Kambaku Media has become one of the biggest channels in our country. And obviously, we've got a plan. We've got a plan to make it bigger. And this is going to be an important part of the development of our country. And I am very happy that this is our 14th year of broadcasting. In 2010, when I went to the United States of America, I came back and I realized that there is no difference between Zimbabwe and any other country. Then I decided to start the process of setting up this media house, Kampakwe Media. And I'm very happy that every single month we are reaching more than 5 million people on our platforms. So let's get started. We've got a lot to cover. And the most important news that we're covering today and our headline is the rituals that are being performed by Mnangagwa around Zimbabwe. So this started before the elections. This is when Mnangagwa started performing the rituals. And these rituals are connected to the war of liberation. And specifically, around uh, August, just before the elections, Mnangagwa sent uh, a number of people, including Patrick Chinamasa, Opam Chinguri, and Gata. I think that is Sydney Gata, according to my sources to lead some rituals. So they were leading those rituals together with uh, Vice President Kembo Muhadi. So Kembo Muhadi was previously leading those uh, rituals and those are traditional rituals uh, around the country, around Zimbabwe. And this week, we've seen more rituals. Tomorrow, there'll be another ritual being performed in, uh, in Gutu. And this is something that is not an isolated case. These are deliberate rituals that are being performed around the country to appease the spirits and there was a planned uh, ritual at the great zimbabwe in november according to my sources who know and this i am not sure if that has taken place but this was going to be the big ritual to notify the spirits that the zimbabwe uh, that we know is now back the, to, to, uh, to advise the, the the ritual the the spirit mediums that our country is now not at war. So this was supposed to happen in November. So I want us to start with that. Uh, so that is 6 to 9 October. Mnangagwa held a ritual in Chivi that was led by chiefs and spirit mediums from across the country. So August, they held a, a ritual. So September, they did not hold a ritual. That was the election month. October, uh, for three days, they held a ritual. And then in November, they were supposed to hold a ritual at the Great Zimbabwe. And you saw that they just did the ritual in Pupu. And then last week, they did the ritual uh, at the Mbungo Shrine, where all the chiefs come. So when you see all the chiefs gathered in one place, and with people like Anacha Rumbira, these guys are performing rituals uh, with the family, uh, Yanam Nangabwa. And then they, they are going to perform a ritual tomorrow at Gutu. And this... Uh, uh, let me see the exact name of the ritual here. The, the place is called, uh, let me quickly, quickly look at this place. So I, I'm, I'm trying to find the actual name of the place in Gutu where they're going to be performing this ritual. Uh, it's going to be publicized, obviously. You're going to see uh, the exact place where they're going to perform the ritual. But uh, I seem to have lost the actual name of where they're going to be performing this ritual. But the whole point is that there is a big spiritual belief in Mnangagwa's government, previously uh, these rituals were being handled at a lower level, but Mnangagwa has taken over. But the most important thing that you see here is that General Chuenga is not involved in these rituals. So I have been saying over the past week that the, the divide between ED is actually so between ED and General Chuenga is actually slow, smaller than the divide between Vice President Mohadi and Vice President Chuenga. So. These rituals are entrusted to Mohadi, but Mnangaba has taken over the ritual himself. So you are going to see that every time such a ritual is performed, Mnangaba is going to be personally present at that place. So tomorrow you are going to see him uh, at the ritual that they are going to perform. And these rituals, according to the guys who have been talking to me, they go back to both the spiritual 
in the military. So there is a military dimension to the, spirit, to the rituals that Mnangagwa is performing. And this is because they have understood that nothing is moving in Zimbabwe. Something is holding back the country. Something that is bigger uh, than just the, the, what we're seeing politically. There is something else in Zimbabwe. That is the belief among the government cycles. That there is a spiritual dimensions, uh, dimension to what is happening in Zimbabwe. To the failure to move forward. And no matter what Mnangagwa has tried, everything has failed. Every single project that Mnangagwa has tried has failed. Every effort that Mnangagwa has tried has failed. And right now, Mnangagwa um, akandiswa mafumo pasi. That is what we call it in Shona. Akandiswa mafumo pasi. He does not know what to do. Uh, so the name of the place in Gutu is called Kamungoma. Uh, that is where they are going to be holding the, uh, uh, the ritual tomorrow. And I forgot to mention that they also went back to Chimoyo to hold the ritual there. Uh, sometimes last year so they've gone to all these places besides the places that i do not know that they've gone to uh, there is a whole department in Nangaba's government that deals with uh, these spirits the spiritual issues uh, they, he's got spiritual consultants he's got people at a spiritual level uh, advising him that is Nangaba as it is right now and it's still not working so everything that Nangaba is not working and the guy that i spoke to said the reason why this is not working is because these guys, their hands are dirty. They've got dirty hands. And when they approach the spirits, they're not being answered. Something is blocking their message from the spirit. So that is our headline for today. Uh, let's see what Nangagwa says tomorrow at the Kamungoma uh, Shrine ritual that they're going to hold tomorrow in Gutu. This is a place where 104 people were massacred by the Rhodesian forces. And also, I think there were some uh, gorillas were there. There was an attack and 104 people or villages were massacred in Gutu, Kamungoma. So let's see what happens tomorrow. This is one of the final rituals that Nangaba is performing. And this process has been undergone in private. It's been going on in private or in secret. Now, let me quickly run through the news. Uh, and this is going to be an interesting uh, news bulletin. Chamisa is in Gutu once again. Chamisa has said he's going to be in Gutu. Or he wasn't good to. He's been spending a lot of time there, and he tweeted this yesterday that uh, he isn't good to. Uh, I find this quite interesting because currently we've got a crisis in our hands, and normally <laughs> I, I, I criticize Shamiza heavily when he disappears during critical times. But I do not know if Shamiza can do anything about what's going on uh, right now. But I expect a, a statement from him regarding the new currency. I do not expect uh, Chamisa to be silent on it. I expect a full uh, analysis of what is happening uh, from Chamisa. And this is very important. Uh, and I also expect, and I've talked to the guys around Chamisa to say, Chamisa must have a spokesperson who, even if Chamisa is not present, can articulate the position. But I think that has been uh, done by uh, Gift Osalo Siziva. So Siziva has spoken about the... The, the currency, uh, we have got a massive problem that is developing in Zimbabwe. Yesterday, the Zimbabwe dollar crashed massively again. And people are losing confidence in the system. Uh, economists are advising Mnangagwa to talk to people before he implements policies. But he's not listening. Um, Mnangagwa is doing his own thing. He doesn't seem to care. But everything is failing around Mnangagwa. And to make matters worse, <laughs> Mnangagwa's projects... Are not finishing so he is now launching useless uh, things uh, you should have seen what happened yesterday they launched a footbridge yesterday uh, this is not a joke uh, that i'm showing you here they called thousands of people in midlands where they launched a little footbridge that's not complete so if i remove the banner here you will see at the bottom that this footbridge is not complete so they painted the little stones here on the side and that's Owen Muda there on the left. Uh, you will see him here. He brought in thousands of people. Uh, and I think they even brought media to cover this. Uh, it's an embarrassment. Um, Nangagwa's projects are not finishing. Everything that Nangagwa is starting is ending halfway through. And eventually, what you're going to see is Zimbabwe is going to become a massive construction site, uh, which is not complete. 
until ED leaves office. This is what is happening. Ngam Nangaba is not consulting. And this week, they've made three very important announcements. And I think most of you would have missed this. Uh, they've made the uh, announcement on the currency. Uh, that is well publicized. They've made an announcement on the National Youth Service. So they are relaunching the National Youth Service. They've also made an, a, a wide-ranging uh, decision on the home affairs system, which includes uh, the police systems, the documentation system, the nation, national registration system, and the police management system, also the national laboratory systems. So they make very massive and far-ranging uh, decisions, and they do not notify the public. They do not take these decisions for discussion. So it's becoming a very, very big problem that when Mnangagwa makes a decision, he makes it, and it doesn't work because there's no buy-in from the general public, and things don't work. Uh, things are not working around Mnangagwa. Things are collapsing. And this month, this is the last month of Mnangagwa's government. Mnangagwa's government is going to go towards a total collapse because of the currency issues. You're going to see the chaos that is going to ensue on Friday. Uh, what you're going to see this week, you've never seen before. And I always say this <laughs> to you. And as I said, the National Youth Service, uh, this is an attempt to bypass the military. They want to create another group that is armed, that is able to bypass the military in terms of political. They cannot politically uh, compromise the military anymore. And they now want to create another group uh, like they did in 2008. And this all goes to the point of what I said in, in early August, uh, that Mnangagwa is now using groups that are not aligned to the state, like FARS, like the 4ED groups. And also now people like Anawikno, uh, who are now moving around with Mnangagwa. If you saw this picture, uh, this is the presidential motorcade. Mnangagwa is no longer moving on the ground uh, because he's not sure who's coming after him. So he's moving in the air. And when he does move in the air, he now has people that are not even related to government. So the second helicopter that you see there, there was Wikno in that helicopter. Uh, and obviously they've got the, the guard on the left. <laughs> not that they, they, they would do a lot if uh, someone has attacked this formation. Now, there's not much they could do. The best they could do here was to probably land somewhere. And that's the advantage of a helicopter. You can easily land anyway. And I think that's what ED has decided to do, to beef up his security, moves away from the motorcade, and he starts moving with uh, the helicopters. And this was the plan that was started by General Chuenga. When General Chuenga is traveling, he always moves around in his two helicopters. Uh, when you see him going to his village, he's on these two helicopters. So Nangaba has adopted the same approach. And now let's look at other news. Uh, I want to start with Africa news. Uh, President of Senegal, Fire, was inaugurated yesterday. Uh, it was a massive inauguration. Uh, everything went well. And I think the confusion that happened for Chamisa was that I think there was a, a, a miscommunication here. I, I know that Chamisa was supposed to be here, but there was a miscommunication between the team here in Zimbabwe and the team in Senegal. Only three African presidents attended here. The ones that I saw, I think that was Nigeria, Ghana, and Cote d'Ivoire. Those are the presidents that I saw here at this uh, inauguration. You can go and look at this inauguration in uh, online, but we have put it on Gabapu Media. We'll just summarize what he said uh, during that inauguration. Amazing inauguration, amazing handover, and the first peaceful transition of this year that we've seen in Northwest Africa. No bloodshed, pure voting. 54% and the, 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 the president, the past president considered and went away. Uh, unlike in Zimbabwe, where every time there's an election, no one concedes, uh, there's fighting. And for years after the Zimbabwean election, you will see that it never ends. It goes on and on and on. Then let's look at um, another very sad case here that I want to, to look at. This is a community case. And that is the lady called Numa Tamsanga. Nyati, she's been in the H Metro newspaper, and I'm showing you here the peace order uh, that was brought to her. Uh, she's brought this peace order against a soldier, an ex husband. He's called Noe Matiza at 5 Brigade Kwekwe. <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, uh, I need to quickly hide this because there are some personal information here. So th these guys were married, and uh, Noe is being violent to his ex wife. He's published a video of her and her current boyfriend when the, he confronted them at the house when they were in bed. 
well, they're not <laughs> in bed in that sense, but they were sitting on a bed. So I've been talking to the mother of Noma Tamsanga herself. And unfortunately, this is an, a case of GBV, as far as I'm concerned. And I've asked them to go to H Metro and talk to the guys there and make sure that they understand that this is a case of GBV. If a woman leaves you or you leave a woman, you cannot go back to her and try to manage what she's doing. So if a woman is gone, you must leave a go, even if you don't agree with the decision or with the breakup. So I'm very sad about this situation because she's been going to H Metro and they've not allowed it to see the editors or to give a side of the story. So let's see what, what happens here. If this continues, uh, we'll make another plan <laughs> for her to get justice. Uh, and I believe her because there is the actual document. Here is the peace order in front of my eyes. So I don't think I'm being taken for a ride. That's DV 9-11-24. That is there and it's stemmed by the police on the 25th of March here. So let's make sure that we protect the women. And if someone is in the military and they continue to, to do this kind of stuff, they need to be disciplined by their uh, seniors. So no Matiza at 5 Brigade, uh, he needs to be brought to order right now. Uh, because apparently the mother has told me that he's also violent to the parents. Of, the, of this woman and so we, we cannot use our newspapers to perpetrate gbv so let's make sure that this is sorted out and we don't have this situation then in terms of the current news in the courts the five hitmen who were hired by harare businessmen businessmen have been demanded in custody they were not allowed to go out so you can go check out that story in the h metro newspaper and then uh, harare news that center a man there uh, he has, uh, after conducting HIV tests on a certain young man, so that's Lionel Chipunza, the 44-year-old New Start employee, took the young man and with his friend Edwin Jenny, and they took him to, to their house and abused him over there. They're in court and they've been demanded in custody. SADC is celebrating 44 years, and they've shared that on the uh, on their platforms. Jacob Zuma is going to court to appeal the decision by the Independent Electoral Commission for him to be blocked from contesting as the president of the MK party. And South African Speaker of Parliament has to hand herself over to police today. So she has to hand herself over to police today because she is facing charges of corruption. I now want to take you to the H Metro newspaper for today. And there is a very sad story over there. So I want you to see it. Let's see what's happening at the H Metro newspaper. A young child has died. Uh, this week at a game park in Harare. So he fell down after a, uh, a horse bolted. So this is a very sad case here. So I want to show you this young man here, uh, this young boy who died this week. So this is the story. Uh, Tinai Chibaya was dragged by a horse. He had been riding after cars which was parked by a fleeing giraffe at a resort on Saturday. He hit his number, he's head a number of times on the rocks during the melee. He suffered severe head injuries. So this is the second death, uh, as far as I'm concerned, at a Harare resort. You remember the last time a Chinese guy put his hand into the enclosure and was eaten by a lion. So this is the second death, uh, sad, sad situation uh, that is developing here at, at the game parks in Harare. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know even what to say. Yeah, like what do you do when you're at a game park uh, these kind of things happen and especially at, when you're with wild animals a lot of things uh, have happened so i think this is the big story here i've not had a time to look at the herald newspaper uh, so let me quickly have a look at the herald newspaper and see if there's anything of interest there except obviously what i just said that nangaba is going to be conducting rituals around the country i'm sure they're going to be covering this uh, in terms of what he's doing all these rituals are to do with uh, the past. So if you look at the Herald today, they're covering the National Youth Service, they're covering King Lo Bengula's grave fund in Zambia uh, and all that kind of stuff. So this is where we, we are. But I want to show you something interesting uh, uh, on the newspaper. So there is Patisanyati here at the front. So Patisanyati is an amazing uh, author from Mulawayo. In fact, his house is in S. Godini. And I used to be 
friends with uh, my young my friend uh, at Mzimwan High School, Mutulisi Nyati. So we used to go to Patisa Nyati's house. <laughs> and I, I like this old man. I didn't know that he was still alive. But I am so happy that I used to actually go to his house in Esigodini. Uh, and it's amazing that uh, this artist is still around. So he's talking about King Lobengula's tomb is in uh, Zambia. So you can go and check it out here in the Herald newspaper. So I'm not going to go through a lot more stories. Uh, I'm going to stop here because it's almost my time for gym. Gym time now. <laughs> so I need to go. I need to go. I'm, I've got a plan now. I've got a plan to revive my, my gym. So this is the, the, the photo that I was talking about. These are the first people that signed the, oh, the SADCC agreement in Lusaka, Zambia. So you can check this out at the SADC page. Uh, the biggest failure of SADC has been the failure to bring Nangaba to order after the SIOM report said that Nangaba rigged the election. And you can see that the economy is bringing Nangaba to order. Uh, ED is going to go out in humiliation. He's going to be shamed. Uh, when he comes out of office, you're going to see that Nangaba is going to destroy his legacy. It's going to happen, and we are going to watch it here. No one takes ED. Someone can provide a solution right now. Yeah, it's a disaster around ED. So let's look at the comments, and then let's quickly wrap this up. I want to start uh, at the bottom. Uh, and Mkoma Putu says, Mbuyanehanda is one ritual performed by ED. First is, is our beloved currency, Nehanda statue, then to Mutapa Fund a clear intention of appeasing his ancestors. Mutapa sounds tribal, other tribes. Uh, yes, I agree. There is a lot of rituals being performed by ED, but I don't think they work. <laughs> and then come say you gave him Nagawa about 30 days and said it will collapse. I'm holding you to your word, 30 April, uh, 2024. Yes, Mkoma MS, uh, you can hold me to it. If this government is going to collapse, uh, Nagawa does not have a clue what to do right now. And I'm giving Nagaba a very uh, severe criticism over his policies because I've been here. If Nagaba just listened to me uh, before the election, things were not as bad as this. What I'd said is that he must fire the Arab UZ governor, and Jonas was here that day, fire the Arab UZ governor, declare a, a, a state of emergency, remove the, the Zimbabwe dollar. By now, we're not going to be in this position. At the moment as things stand, the Zimbabwe dollar has collapsed, the currency has collapsed, Mnangagwa's projects are in shambles. There is no person in the Zimbabwe government who can show you a project that Mnangagwa has completed. All the way from parliament, airport, dams, roads, everything that Mnangagwa has started, nothing is finished. And I challenge anybody who, who knows a project that Mnangagwa has, has completed to, to let me know. Uh, the, there was a list of almost a hundred uh, tasks that Mnangagwa set himself. And out of those hundred, there is nothing that is complete. This is a, the biggest shame for a president. And now we have a collapsed currency. Even the people in ZANU-PF can see Kuti, Apanachi, Ugitika, Mnangagwa, Arkurayaran, and Nzara. That's the worst part. No one is making money in Zimbabwe. Everyone is hungry because of Mnangagwa. And uh, I, I feel so sad, Kuti. Someone who started so well, uh, when Mnangagwa started the, that very week when he took over, I drove to Zimbabwe and I went to Bulawayo. There was an air of expectation. Uh, everyone was happy, Kuti. Mgabe was gone. But right now, if Mgabe was to come back, Mgabe would be shocked <laughs> to see what Mnangagwa has done. Uh, Mnangagwa has done worse. And to make matters worse, the same reasons that why oh, Mnangaba removed Mgabe. He has gone and done worse than that. He's employed his kids in, in, in government. He has put his relative in everything. Uh, so all his relatives, he's destroyed systems, and his projects are in limbo. Every project is in limbo. The currency has even collapsed worse uh, than during Mugabe's days. This is crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, <laughs> and then Mugabe says, at the end, God win the battle. One by kid, we need more prayer. Right, we need more prayer. I agree. And I think here, this is where we need Chamisa to, to, to show up. Uh, I need Chamisa to show up and uh, take us in the right direction. We need direction here. Uh, currently, we need an alternative. And an alternative is a new approach, a new order, and the removal of the current confusion. Uh, Mnagawa's government is a mishmash of projects, 
statements, ideologies, theories, but apana uh, chukubuda, nothing is coming out. Uh, you don't even know what where is going right now with his projects, with his plans. Where are we going to be next week? Uh, you don't even know where we are going to be next week. And I want to end with the Mkoma Wangu. <laughs> I'm saying, Mavima, you could have been given an envelope full of cash, Magaya bribes and kills any sexual crime store against him. So Mkoma Mavima says, every day I will remind you of your promises. That only live for an episode. <laughs> that is me, right? Uh, let's wait and see. Uh, let's wait and see. I don't know Magaya. Uh, I've never talked to Magaya. I know a lot about Magaya. Uh, but my guy, I will never take a cent from anyone. I've never taken a cent from anyone. But you don't know that the money that we use and live on is the money that we get from this platform. So let me explain to you what has been happening. Ever since I came from hospital, which was like two years ago, I almost died. Like I was down for weeks. I couldn't see anything. After I came out, I had a lot of debt. So I had a lot of debt from the hospital bills, from the fact that I couldn't work for months, and from the fact that our channel uh, literally went down. So our channel was not running for almost two years. And so what I did, because I'm a consultant, uh, last year I had to go and consult for six months. And when I consult every month, I take home about 10,000 US dollars. A month. That is what I'm talking about here. Saka, kutawara pana pakuna kuna one thousand a month, and it my income. When I'm consulting, it can give me ten grand dollars a month. So I went and consulted for six months. Six hundred thousand rands. Sorry, sixty thousand dollars, which is equivalent to one point two million. So that means for the next square uh, sixty thousand. So obviously, I have to leave and I have to pay back my debt and this interest. However, you will never see me with my 60,000 debt, which I currently own. Oh, I, 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 this is transparent and it's not even a secret thing. I still don't take anyone's money. So if you hear someone saying, Gababo is taking money from people or whatever, I've never done so. We also apply to grants and all these things that come out. But we've so far not received any money. And we've been so funding. Uh, this is how the situation is right now. And it's going to be like that for a while until eventually our head, head office is up, which needs $200,000 to, to build. And every week here, there are people from this very platform who are sending us money for the construction, but it's not going to be enough. We have to make another plan to raise $200,000. But uh, it's important for us to understand Kuti. Where is media in the future? What is the importance of media? The, the Zimbabwe that you want to build, it needs a very strong media. Uh, not even on Europe, Twitter, and Facebook. We need to create a media that is almost as strong as the government. That is how strong our media should be. Then we need people in government that have a plan. Not uh, We need people in government that have a plan. Then we need a military and a security service that is saving the people and that does not become compromised by politicians. So the, the systems that we have in Zimbabwe are collapsed. The media is non-existent. When I say non-existent, I mean good. In, as part of our GDP, our media is nothing. Whereas our media should be contributing about 5% of GDP. I'm talking here about my movies, my documentaries, uh, we should be building our culture, our tourism, our tourism, you know, up on the media, because kind of a mini bad image. Then we go back to our infrastructure. But as infrastructure, we have parallel. So if you look at our roads, if you're driving to Victoria Falls, you can't get there. If you're driving to Binga, you can't get there. If you're driving to Kariba, you can't get there. And if you're driving to, to Zambia through the, the, the border, Akusuku Fambika. Mnangaba knows all these things that I'm telling you. So our infrastructure is destroyed. Then you need internet access. And it's internet access, as Kushanda, almost 50% of Zimbabweans are not on the internet. And when internet, automatically they are disqualified from the economy. 
Then you go to our banking system, it's collapsed. The Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is part of the problem, and there's no payment system in the country. Uh, I think that opens up. It's not going to consult up or which I miss out of Pindagi or Roa, you know, Shudir Rashuga, President Chamisa Adira Shuga, if I if I consult him. But I know that there are business people around uh, President Chamisa, guys I respect, uh, that are working with uh, Chamisa right now to work on all these programs that I'm talking about. But the truth is that what is broken in our country cannot be fixed by this current group, Iripo, Ana ED, they cannot fix what is there. You need young people that are going to inspire confidence uh, in, in these things that we're talking about. Vanuana Mabasa, Vanuabuda from all these countries, Wotzokam Zimbabwe, and our country becomes a jewel again. Uh, what needs to be fixed? Fixed would take no more than five years. Uh, Zimbabwe would be one of the most beautiful countries ever. So I'm going to MS, it's not a disagreements on a lot of things, uh, but what we can agree on is that Mnangagwa has failed. Uh, and I will never change my, my view on failure of Mnangagwa. And to make matters worse, in India, in Zimbabwe, I did a, a guy like me. Those who are not in the country, they are not in the country, they are not in the country. They are not in the country, they are not <laughs> and they say uh, they, they, they don't respond to my invitation to chat, to have a, a discussion. No because you don't know who are the people that you need to talk to. Uh, Zimbabwe has got a lot of people, knowledgeable people, but the Mnagabwe government does not want to consult those people. They want to continue with their failed policies. <laughs> so um, let's agree that the ED has failed our country has got no reason why it is in the state that it is right now. And Mnangaba, I challenge him to say to me where he has made any progress. Where has Mnangaba done anything that Mugabe had not done before and made it better? There's no way. And on top of that, he gets given advice on a daily basis. And he doesn't take that advice. So, Nangaba, the total problem in Zimbabwe, and we need this man to leave uh, as soon as possible. So, um, what they said, the current issue is in this, the second scene. I said, Guti, Vakata Matisin's three the currency, the national aid service, and the home affairs system. Those are three massive decisions which are going to change your life. The, the home affairs system, in the end, Sanangore with Munichi, home affairs system, and apologies here for. Looking up in the air, my, my, my setup has changed, so it's a bit strange here. <clears throat> so we've got the information, the integrated police integrated information management system, traffic management system, laboratory management system, and the electronic documents and record management system. These are the things that are in the current system. And they've told no one, they've consulted no one, and you don't know what it, it means. So it's uh, these are massive uh, issues. Uh, National Youth Service, are they going to have guns? Are they going to be a part of the, the military structure? So what does that mean? Uh, so Mukoma Martin Rotem Rupens are data in Mahara. In those and Rutaura, at your age, you mustn't even be talking about data. Mukoma Martin. Vanambuya, Marakumu Shakunok, South Africa. Vanupua data, 50 megabytes a day. So kind of Pretoria, city of Pretoria, not city of Swani. A resident of that place, ano pure data, 50 megabytes a day. I end up a WhatsApp, I end up a internet, I don't know news, I talk a bus. And it's. Mnanga baga wono ripa internet, no lo sungwa. No to sungwa kuti. Why ni riva internet? Because, ava ziva komana, they don't know what they're doing. And, West, Kanavachi tora mare reserve bank and messing it up. Ukawa uza uti, guys, mara yafana uzika from 5,000 to 40,000 in one month. Vano tu toko sunga, yu zima yere is being insulted left, right and center online. Because a typical Zanupi of supporter, arimu muimbaya ye, ino nishiko jongo ya hozi, ino marari, is only looking out for themselves. They don't care kuti, what is the bigger picture? What are the implications of the things that are happening in our country in five years, in ten years? And I There are some very smart youngsters there. 
like I, I mean people younger than me who have left the diaspora to come and work uh, with ZANPF. I went and sat down with um, a few of the top ZANPF guys inside ZANPF. And in the world, they are the world. 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 They are the And I've sat with all those people that I'm telling you. I've sat with them. So the reason why, and the and I've talked to some of the, the family directly. The problem with these guys is they don't understand Kuti what is falling apart. So there is a canteen downstairs, and then Kuni lift lift in Ofamba Mashef, Iraba. Put a lift in Ofamba uh, sort of like uh, service lift. So the main lift is dead. Yemzan. And then service lift, I don't know what you have to do. Service lift. Do I shanda? So part of the mirror man got twenty. We can mirror open up service lift. And the actual lift is not working. We can pinda mzano mune my computer is 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 my boxes. Jaga chamber. And my office is so my window, I add my dust. They are very dusty. However, Uka Pinda mu office is on their assistance. Vanewagara. So every office in that top building that you see is meant. Pane moon are office. So kind of office where I open poof mune moon mune mune assistant. Very competent people. The problem is this political class in Muzan PF. They've got no clue. So Uka Bunza Obed Mpoff and it. Could orbit. What's your view on the crash of the currents? Right now, orbit is going to tell you, "Good, no, 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 my sanctions." But he doesn't know, "Good." Man, the meeting of Anita, because one is one run like a company. So Anita, my meeting, my my ex committing. Anita says, "See, see." Anita, my ex committing. Anita, my 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 committees. Zanpiv is like a massive company. But the problem is, once they make all those decisions. Then they don't do anything with it. Mnagaba just overrides everything. And you see Oxilia, Anupinda meeting, ye politburo, Ogara. Saka, Kadachuenga got out or something, and it. Atanga Tarzagoti, Kumayvan Zotichi, and it. Achata Oris and Gadota. Same thing, Kalamkaida military, Kunimun, Gom Nangaba, Noga Garapa, a table. Minister of Finance, Panga Panimun, Gom Nangaba, Noga Garapa, a table. That is why things don't work. You need to have a formal government. You need to have processes. All the way from Zanpiv, which end up government. And then you need money to be valuable. Could money, Marie, is a, is a, is a week. So I get it. Could we not answer one million and it? Opa moon. What are two million? Opa uh, motor. And the motor is a zombie that was duty. Kuzimra. I challenge Wikino. Could I trace a motor zaki? They do not pay duty. Anyone who is they know this. So these are the kind of things that I'm talking about. Zimbabwe will never work. Because the current leadership that we've got is the problem. And once you address the leadership, then everything will work. And as you got before this current leadership is gone, it won't be fixed. You will not be able to fix uh, the issue. But anyway, uh, there are rituals that are being performed around the country. Mnangwa believes that if he does these rituals, uh, then everything will be fine. Uh, the rituals in August, uh, then rituals in October, November, and then in February now, and tomorrow there's another ritual in Gutu. So these are the rituals that are being performed with the intention of sorting out the economy. But it won't work. <laughs> it will never work. So let's wrap this up. Um, the problem in Zimbabwe is enemies who punish Zimbabweans for being wealthy. So they have to well hide their wealth. Guys, but I want to address you. Nagada was Zimbabwe uh, about two months ago. Then I was looking for some stuff. In fact, I was supposed to meet Kudam I think that day I was supposed to meet Kudam Sasiwa. So he gave me directions to his house and I got lost. So I couldn't get there. Uh, so as I was driving to his house and getting lost, I passed through a certain area where there's construction. Zimbabwe, 
you can never find those houses in South Africa. So there's no one hiding wealth. Mumbuenda kuna kuma areas are low density, and there's so much opportunity in Zimbabwe. Uh, when I was working at the bank, uh, Patras Bank, Munuese akatenga waimba ni kamba. Apana muna zao tenga waimba, mukata mbrook meme, mo chaga kutoa na wari Patras Bank, wari wangu ni Zimbabwe mo wanga. Kuna na mo place nchi. It's easy to to fix this economy. But you can't do it in the approach. You every two years, currency no collapse. Tutanga food. Every two years, you collapse. Tutanga food. <laughs> that won't work. And kuchikam nangaba, it won't help. Kutimuchika kutim nangaba, tomuchika. Even in Mimana Rumzan, Munochki, what are you afraid of? Nangaba must be confronted for what he's doing right now, which is to destroy value. He's destroying value on a daily basis. And he's not finishing his project. There's no one who's afraid. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, and everyone should be united to say, Zurigoiti guys, we don't want it. The currency and the economy, they should be isolated from everything. So from Friday, we should not have a currency that collapses again and again and again and again. So if you plan on Friday, that will be their last day. They, that must be their last day in office. They must know that people don't want this, uh, what they're doing. So Kuramba Wachib, destroy a currency and flaunting the world uh, in, in the face of all this poverty that we have in our country. So this is where we need to be, uh, including all the guys that are in ZANU PF, uh, the well-meaning guys in ZANU PF, and the general population. We must not accept as uh, it guys. It's, it's terrible. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I, I tend to get distracted, and I tend to like the... <laughs> like the sound of your own voice, but I am by no means the smartest person in Zimbabwe. I just happen to be so passionate to go to Gabanaba every day talking to you. But I tell you guys and all the people who are following here, uh, we are in the right direction. Let's get a new leadership in our country and we're going to do well. Mnangaba won't change. He won't change what he's doing. He's going to continue uh, in this way that he's continuing. And he does not see his own failure. So, come to Nagabo to look on a lot of times. like can I just want to a cafe like the last last failure right now is the Nagabo government. They should be ashamed to even get out of the houses at the moment. What turns our room up? So, thank you everyone for watching.